Hey everyone, it's your pal Dave from notesandvolts.com and today we're going to do a very quick, simple and useful project. We're going to make this four button MIDI foot switch. It's got USB MIDI out and four buttons that are each going to put out a CC command. Now I actually need this for myself because I use a program called Endless for my live looping and I needed a way to trigger the loops hands free. So I thought I'd make a little foot switch. This did the job, it's the perfect solution. This is a great project too if you're brand new to this and you wanna get into making your own custom accessories, this is a great place to start. So I'll make a part two of this video where I'll explain a bit more how it works, but for this one, we're just gonna build it up and enjoy. So let's get started. All right, so let's take a closer look at the project. Here it is, so uh, I'm using a strong sturdy aluminum enclosure uh, so when I step on it I don't break it and uh, here's my four foot switches and here's my USB out so you notice I used a round drill hole for the USB out instead of filing a square hole which takes a lot of time and can be messy and I found this works pretty well and it's easy to do so that's why I chose that route so let's take a look at the parts you're going to need to make this. First of all, you're going to need the enclosure, and this is the one I used. It's a Hammond 1590BX2 BK. You're also going to need four foot switches. So these are single pull, single throw, momentary, so that's very important, momentary foot switches. So momentary means you press it and it's on and when you release it, it's off. So a latching switch means you'd press it once, it would be on, you press it again and it will go off. That's not the type you want, you want momentary. And I also like to use these right angled switches because they take up less space and they fit in a shallow box like this. So make sure the switches you get actually fit in the box you want to use. For the microcontroller, I'm using a Teensy LC. So for the USB, I'm using this guy. This is a USB panel mount adapter cable. So on one side, I got the big plug with the panel mounting screws so I can attach it to the surface. And on the other side, I've got the micro plug at a right angle, which I find is helpful in this case. So when I put this in, the plug kind of goes there and the Teensy can sit right on the plug in this area here. I'm gonna put a link under the video that's going to give you the exact parts list. You'll also need some 22 gauge stranded hookup wire. I usually use two colors to help me color code things. And some solder and a drill. And those are the parts you need to make this project. To program the microcontroller for this project, you're going to need two pieces of software. First of all, go to www.arduino.cc and go to the software tab. And you're going to go down. You don't want the web editor. You want this one, the IDE 1.8. whatever the latest version is. You don't want to go to 2 yet. Stay with 1.8. Now choose the one you need for your operating system and download it and install it. Next you'll need to go to pjrc.com slash teensy slash td download html and you're going to want to find the teensy duino loader and this is version 1.56 and you can see the uh, arduino software it's compatible with that's why we're sticking with the 1.8 versions for now. So just choose the one you need. So I, I use Windows, so I've used this one. Install it in your computer. Now here's an important note. When you're installing it, it's going to ask you which libraries do you want to install. Make sure you click All and then Next. Once you have your software installed, check the video description for this video and I'll give you a link to download the software for this project. So once you unzip the folder, you're gonna find a few files. Let's go through what they are. One of the files is going to be a drill guide and it's going to show you this. It's in PDF format and it's going to give you the exact drilling locations for the box. I'll give you more details on how to use this later in the video. 
The next file you'll see is the schematic file. And the wiring for this project is very simple, but I'll go through it here just so to help you understand. So here's our Teensy board. We're gonna start here with this pin labeled G. This is the ground pin. And we're gonna take a wire from the ground pin to one of the terminals on our switch. Now we have to wire all the switches to this ground pin. So what we'll do is we'll chain a wire between each switch. So we're gonna run the ground here, chain a wire to the next switch, chain it to the next, and finally to the last switch. So all the switches will be connected to this single ground pin. Next we'll take the other terminal of the pin and we'll call this the signal pin. We'll connect an individual wire from each signal pin to one of these inputs. These are called digital inputs on the TNT board. So the one bar loop button on this controller is going to go to digital pin zero and then loop two will go to digital pin one and two and three for the other two. And that's really it for the wiring. It's pretty simple. Okay, so let's get to the main program. So you're going to find this file here, edlsfs.eno. You can double click that and it will open your Arduino software. Okay, so here is the program. You don't really need to understand how it works. You just need to upload it to the Teensy processor. One thing you can change easily if you want to is the MIDI CC numbers and you can find them right here. So right now I'm using 38, 39, 40, 41, but if you want to change them to something else, simply change these numbers exactly as they are here and uh, that will give you different CC numbers. Make sure you have two tabs, so you should have a name.c tab and a, the main program file tab. The name.c is just going to give the, the device a USB name that your computer recognizes, so you don't really need to touch that, just make sure it's there. And uh, we're going to be uploading this edls.fs file to the TNT board. Once you're, you got everything working, you can remove your TNT from its packaging. They're very small and you can plug it into USB. And your computer should recognize it. You should get a USB connection beep. And usually these uh, devices from the manufacturer are loaded with a simple test program that will just blink this LED. So if you got the blinking LED and you heard your computer recognize it, you should be in good shape. Now, in order to upload this correctly, we have to make sure we have a few things. So one thing to check, first of all, is that you have the Bounce library. This should be installed when you installed the Teensy software. But to make sure, go up to Sketch, Include Library, and in your list of libraries, if you scroll down, you should see Bounce. And you want the original Bounce, not Bounce 2. Uh, we're using the original Bounce, so as long as that's there, you're in good shape. Next, we have to configure the software for our particular board. Here are the parameters that you're gonna need. So upload settings, the board is gonna be Teensy LC, the USB type is MIDI, and the CPU speed is 48 megahertz. So if you go to tools, and then you go to uh, these settings here, this is where you're gonna set that. So board, go to Teensy Duino, and then choose Teensy LC. USB type, go to MIDI. CPU speed, you can set at 48 megahertz. All the rest should be fine. And the last thing you need to do is check your port. So once we plugged in our TNC to USB, it should be recognizable here. Your computer's gonna find it and it should show up here. Right now it's listing as raw HD TNC LC. That is fine. Make sure that is selected. Okay, so first of all, if we verify the code, it's going to compile the sketch and make sure there's no errors. So once you're done, you'll get this little message telling you how big the program is, but you'll also get this little window pop up, and this is the Teensy Duino loader program. So once we've done that, we're ready to upload to the Teensy. So click this arrow here, upload, and you'll see our program once it's compiled. It's going to attempt to program. Once it's done successfully, you should see a message that the TNT is rebooting. You should hear a new USB beep, and then you should be good to go. If you want to double check, if you go back to tools, 
and you go to uh, port. Now our Teensy board should be labeled as a MIDI device. <laughs> All right, in this part of the video, I'm gonna show you how I lay out and drill a box like this. So this is a Hammond 5090BX2. This is the one I'm using for this project. And what I've done is I've made up a diagram, a drill guide uh, that shows you the exact dimensions. So when I printed this out, I made sure that it was one-to-one -one scale because printers can shrink to fit. And you can check that by putting the box right on the diagram and you should see it line exactly up with the edges of your drawing. Also, I'm going to use this panel mount USB to bring the USB out the back of the unit. If you put it on the diagram, the holes here should line up with the, the mounting holes in your part. If not, you're just gonna have to kind of do your own measurements and refine this to make it work for your particular cable. Also, the uh, foot switch I'm using, I found it works okay with a half inch drill. So I put the sizes of the drill I'm going to use right on the drawing. Uh, one thing I like to have is one of these. This is called a drill gauge and it allows you to accurately check drill sizes. So normally this, uh, you just put the drill bit through here and you can check what size drill you actually have if it's not marked. But it's also good if you have a part like this, and you want to check what size hole you need. Well, you can just put it in and so that's too tight. That's not fitting. That's not fitting. So this is the, the exact fit, 15, 30 seconds for this part. And you can see if I go to one half, it still, it works pretty well. There's a little bit of slop, but if you only had a half inch drill bit, I think that would be fine. But whatever size it is, just get the correct drill size for your particular switch. One thing I, I like to use as well is these uh, stepped drill bits. So you can see it's a drill bit, but it's got all these little steps and each step is a different size. So this one goes from, I, I think, eighth, one eighth of an inch up to half an inch. And the deeper you drill, the wider the hole gets. And this also makes it easier because if you're doing a handheld drilling, if you don't have a drill press, you're not drilling a giant hole right from the start right you're gradually opening it up and that's a little easier to do especially with a larger hole if not what i would do is i would drill this in two steps i would get a small drill this is 1 8 inch this is the size i'm going to use for this and i would drill first a hole in all these larger holes with the 1 8 inch bit and then i would come along and widen it with the uh, the correct size bit. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do to uh, get this template onto our box is we're going to cut it out. Now, one thing to keep in mind, these Hammond boxes have rounded corners. And you can see those rounded corners in the drawing. You see this little part here? That is indicating where the rounding of the corner starts. What we'll do is we'll cut this out right to that line, the inside of that line, and we're going to place it just where the edge of the paper meets the start of the rounded corner. So right up the edge here, but we're not going to try to wrap it around the rounded corner. You can see there's a rounded top as well. So that's going to meet where the rounding starts at the top. Same for the top. We're going to cut on the inside of the line and you can see the rounding because there is rounding on the top as well. So we'll cut on the inside of that and then we'll place it so the edge of the paper meets where the rounded corner starts. So let's take this and let's cut it out. Okay, so here we have our two templates, and what we're going to do is we'll take the uh, box, and I'll start with this top one, and once again, I'm trying to uh, get the edge of the 
template to meet just where the edge rounds over on the box. Once I get it there, I'm going to use some blue tape to tape it down. Now what we need to do is we're going to mark the center of these holes. And you can see I've added some center marks on each of the holes with a little cross right at the center. Now here's the way I like to mark these for the most accurate positioning. I like to start with something very small like this pin. And I, I just make a little indent a little hole right at the center of the cross. You'll find the, the bigger the thing you're trying to um, do the center mark with, the harder it is to find the exact center. But if you use a pin to start with, you can get very accurate. Next thing I like to do is take this thing here. This is called an automatic center punch. And it's basically a spring-loaded device that uh, you press down on and once you reach a certain point it's going to click and it's going to drive a dent into the metal. So there's a, a sharp point here and what you can do is you can kind of feel around and you'll find it will sit in that hole we made with the pin. And then we press it down until it clicks and that's going to put a nice dent in the center of our metal. And there you go, we've got some nice center marks. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the back panel and we're going to place it on the back. So I'm thinking this is the front of the uh, project. This is the, I'll be facing this way. So at the back, my, my hole for my MIDI jack is going to be on this side, the right side. And once again, we'll center it. So the uh, bottom edge of the cutout will go to the bottom edge of the the enclosure and the side will go right where the uh, rounding starts right there. So with uh, the back panel here we have to be very careful that we get these three holes as accurate as possible because they need to line up with this physical part. So once again, I'm going to start and use the pin technique and find the exact center of those marks. Once you've done that, we'll take our center punch and make the dent. You can take all this stuff off. And you should see some nice indents in the metal. And that way when we try to drill, you'll find the tip of the drill bit will, will line up nicely and lock itself into those indents. And you're going to get a nice accurate hole placement. All right, let's start drilling. Okay, let's get started. So you can see I've taken my freshly drilled enclosure and I've installed the switches. So now I'm going to test fit my USB cable just to see where the end of the cable ends up. This way I'll know where the microcontroller should go and I'll know how long to cut the wires. 
Now I'm going to grab two colors of 22 gauge stranded hookup wire. Now I'm going to take the green wire and start wiring up the ground pins on my switches. I always cut the wire longer than I need so I can trim it to the exact size later. Keep in mind that we're going to daisy chain all our ground pins together. So on some of the pins, I'm going to have to attach two pieces of wire. Now that I've got my wires cut to length, I can strip the ends off. To get them ready to solder, I'm going to twist the ends of the wire together. Now I can take the twisted ends of the wire and feed it through a terminal on the switch. Once it's there, I'll bend the wire around the terminal to hold it in place. Now I'll grab my soldering iron and solder the joint in place. Finally, I'll grab my cutters and cut off any excess. Now I'm going to grab some orange wire and wire up the second terminal. Remember to leave the wires a little long at this stage so you'll have plenty of extra in case you need it. Once the wires attach, solder it in place and trim off the excess. So the first switch is done. Now I can take the ground wire and chain it to the next switch. Remember I'm going to have to attach a second ground wire so I can chain it to the third switch and on and on. Once again I'll solder the other color of wire to the second terminal. Now simply repeat this process for the third and fourth switches. So this is what you should have when you're done. All the grounds connected together and an orange signal wire on each switch going to where the microcontroller is going to sit. Now we're ready to connect the switches to the microcontroller. I'll start by soldering the green ground wire to the pad marked G. I'm going to use this little clamp holder to hold the board in place while I solder it. The pads on the microcontroller are very small, so be very careful when you solder. Now I'm going to attach the orange signal wires to the pads marked 0, 1, 2, and 3 on the microcontroller. Refer to the wiring diagram to get the correct order. When you insert the wires into the holes, make sure that all the strands go through. You don't want any stray strands sticking out and causing shorts. And that's it for the soldering. Now I'm going to install the USB cable using the nut and bolt that came with it. That looks pretty nice. Now I need to decide how to mount the microcontroller inside the enclosure. You can't leave it floating around because if the pins touch the metal case, they would short out. I decided to use two pieces of foam and some tape to make a little sandwich that will hold the teensy in place and keep it protected. There's a little white button on the top of the teensy. Make sure the foam is not pushing this button in. And now for my favorite part of any project, finishing it up by putting the cover on the back. And here is the finished product. Looks great. I can't wait to try it out. Now that our project is done, all we need to do is set it up in Endless. So let's plug this into our computer. So now that we have Endless Studio running, we're ready to set up our controller. So the first thing you want to do is go to the gear icon and go to MIDI settings. And we should see our new controller pop up in the list of MIDI controllers available. So you want to make sure that notes is checked and mapping is checked. So now we can go to the MIDI icon. And if you want, you can create a new mapping. 
and we'll give it a name uh, EDLS FS. So the controls we want to map are these four right here. These are the looping controls. So we'll first select the one bar and then I will hit the one bar button on my controller. And there you go, you can see it's populated. Now just do the same with the second button, third button, and the fourth button. Now we can close this and if we push these you can watch right here you should see these light up with the corresponding button. And there you go. All right, I hope you are inspired and fired up to try this project. It's super fun. But before we go, I got to once again thank my supporters on Patreon. Thank you guys for sponsoring this video. Let's enjoy your names.